Hello everybody, welcome back. If you remember a couple of videos ago, I said there was a package coming that would be a game changer on how I how I set up power in one of my vehicles. Uh, probably the van first, uh, possibly the, uh, well, the Bounders, uh, never mind the Bounder, probably in the, uh, the Coachman uh, that I'm gonna go pick up soon. But it, it's a game changer for a couple of reasons. And I have it in the van right now, I'm gonna show that to you. All right, I have it up here uh, for the time being. It actually needs to be uh, be on the floor, but uh, just set up here to make this uh, video a little bit easier. This is the big blue, what's it called? The uh, Cell Power 2500, and uh, it's rated or it's uh, it's called a 2500 because that is the maximum output you can you can plug in. You know some heavy hitting uh, appliances in here, and it'll put up the 2500. Uh, 2500 watts out i mean that's like a hair dryer a microwave and yeah so it'll put some power out that's for sure the thing is with these is uh they're not it's not an industry standard on how they rate these this one's you know rated at you know, 2500 for max its maximum power output some are rated for their amp hours uh, some are rated for watt hours, so it, it makes them hard to c compare uh, one to the other when they're talking in different uh, different terms. But I'm gonna I just want to clear some a couple things up here to make this easier to understand. Uh, you know what this does, how much it has, and in real simple terms, I don't want to get into technical. Uh, there's other reviews out, channels and stuff out there that do that and bench put them on a bench and blurt out all these uh, crazy numbers that really don't mean anything for the end user. I mean, maybe it does this some, but uh, I think most of us just want to know, okay, what can I do with it out here? You know, how's it going to work for me without all that technical mumbo jumbo, right? <laughs> uh, but hang on a second. Okay, I may just made a couple of quick general notes. Uh, I'm just going to keep it simple and hit on a couple of points. Uh, I think the first thing is, for me, the reason it's a game changer is that this simplifies on how I install a, you know, power in a, in a van. Or, or an RV, you know, adding a, a, you know, solar and charge controllers and inverters and all that kind of stuff. It simplifies that. And the second thing is the uh, quick charge technology. That This thing charges, for the amount of power this has, it charges so much faster than, uh, than the competitors do. And I've looked around at, you know, some of the competitors, you know, what's, the, what's their latest? You know, what are they... Uh, you know, not not necessarily the older models, but what what have they just come out with? What's their latest and greatest? And they they still they still don't compare. So and that comes into play whenever it's, you have used this for a while, and you you know eventually you you you've run it down and it's due for a recharge to be recharged. Uh, you know, if you're gonna whether you plug it into a house or a campground or run your or run a generator or whatever, you know the less especially the generators, the less you have to run the generator, the better. I mean, who wants to run it for six or eight hours charging something up? This charges in less than two hours. So there's a difference of generator time. I mean, that's a big difference. Um, let me just briefly, uh, I, I'm going to touch on the home the home use. You know, people use uh, have backup power for, you know, when there's bad storms, whether it's a major wind event, uh, it takes out, you know, trees and power lines and stuff, or... Uh, or a winter event like an ice storm and you know the lines get heavy and break you know so it could be without power for you know days several days uh, until they get you know things repaired and people's biggest concern is usually the refrigerator or freezer uh refrigerator freezer combo or that and a separate like a chest freezer or something where uh but you know that's people's main concern is they don't want their foods to go bad so that's the main th reason for you know backup power so that's the only thing i'm gonna i think i'm gonna touch on uh is how long you can get by with that and a lot of these companies you know this one included and yeah, the competitors i think they struggle to give examples on how how long you can run this and how long you can run that um you know one example one bad example was uh one company said you know you could run a 900 watt toaster for like two hours how useful is that? It's going to make toast for two hours. That's going to be some pretty burnt toast, or you've made a lot of toast into. Right? That doesn't do me a whole lot of give you a good feel for what I could do with it, right? Um, another one, it, it's a little more usable. Let me let me set this down here. Let me set my camera down here for a minute. 
The other uh, one that was a little bit closer to being useful was about a refrigerator. You know, they figured the average refrigerator ran at 100 and, 100 and 150 watts. And so they figured, uh, let me get back to how many watts, watt hours this has, because it was rated at the uh, maximum output of 2,500. And in terms of watt hours, it's just over 1,800. I think it's 1,834 watt hours. We'll just call it 1,800 to keep things simple. So the they figured that the average refrigerator used 150 watts. And so you divide that into um, 1,800 watts. They figured that'll run a refrigerator for 12 hours. I got that right? I think so. Um, well, that's that's continuous running. That would be in refrigerators don't run continuously. So a lot of those examples, you know, if you're shopping around different you know websites and stuff looking at these things, uh, you have to. They take a little bit of interpretation. You know, you have to think, well, that appliance is yeah, it don't work like that. You know, um, so that's twelve hours of it running steady, like if somebody left the refrigerator door open, right? Well. You know, refrigerators only kick on maybe once every couple of hours, you know, run for 10 or 15 minutes and shut back off for a couple of hours. So really that translates into, it would actually run a refrigerator quite, uh, quite a long time. If it's steady at 12 hours, I mean, it'd probably run a refrigerator for several days, right? And freezers use even less because people aren't into their freezer near as often. Right, refrigerators at meal times, and you know, grab a, a snack or a drink, or, you know, in between or whatever. So they're open and close a few times throughout the day, but you know, freezers stay, you know, shut. Sometimes for days on end, they barely run. You know, occasions even less. So um, you could probably run a refrigerator and freezer for several days in a power a power outage event. Uh, so there's, you know, and then you wouldn't be running that generator continuously or have to maintain it run make sure you're running it periodically to keep things cold you can just plug this in for a couple of days and you're good yeah and then if there's still the power wasn't back on because of the quick charge technology you could fire up a generator plug it in for a little bit and you're good to go for several days so did i say oh uh, yeah the so i tested it Again, a lot of the companies, I don't know why they do this, they kind of give an estimate on the recharge time. They say from zero up to 80%. Okay, well, why not give me the number up to 100%? I don't know why they do that, but uh, it was typical with uh, some other companies too that I looked around at. Um, the smaller one, okay, keep in mind it's 1,800 watt hours. I have one that's 1,000. Okay, that's like about half, um, a little over half of this one. It takes seven, no, seven to eight hours to recharge it for a thousand watt hours. Seven, seven to eight hours. And the, and a bigger one similar to this, a, a competitor, um, they claim, oh, they've made this these improvements and have now have uh, quick charge technology too, and they. So I don't know what it used to be, but they're only down to five and a half to six hours with their new technology, yeah. So I timed, anyway, I timed this from zero, um, wait. So this this company from zero to 80% claimed an hour and a half. That's, that's quite, quite a bit faster, right? So uh, I timed it. And from zero to 100%, yes, I plugged a bunch of stuff into an electric heater and I don't know what all, fan, a fan, and I just, you know, ran it till it was dead, ran it down to zero. And so I plugged it in and I set a stopwatch, a stopwatch app on my phone, set a, set a timer, you know, and from zero to 100%, it recharged in an hour and 41 minutes. And that's incredibly fast compared to any of the competitors incredibly fast so whether it's the recharging it you know in a storm event you know for backup power uh whether you've run it for your refrigerator and freezer for a couple of days you know you run your generator for that hour and 40 minutes and you're good to go for a couple more days or you know if you're out camping or whatever and uh, you need to uh, have some cloudy days when you can't charge it with solar or 
Uh, you, know, you can run your generator for a short time and be good to go for quite a while. Yeah, so that quick charge technology is a game changer. Uh, I I really like that. You know, an RV or a RV or van. Throw this thing in there. Um, I can run solar directly into it. I don't need all this hardware. Uh, it has on this side it has the uh, on this side. Yeah, it's a little bit heavy, so it's not one of them little light portable ones for little jobs. Uh, it's heavier, but but for for bigger jobs. And uh, so I would just plant this thing down here in the corner. I I'd run my solar down and, and it, into it directly. It's you know it's an all-in-one thing. It has its own charge controller. I don't need that one. I don't need to buy these individual components and mount them and hook them all up and all that stuff. Solar directly into it. So it, it controls it. You know, it has a battery management system and it you know, takes care of all that. Uh, yeah, the 12 volt, uh, all the 12 volts over here, the USBs, USB-Cs, uh, two other 12 ports. I forget what those uh, these ports are called. Um, but uh, and then a like a cigarette lighter uh, power port type thing. So that's all the 12 volt stuff. And then on the other side, yeah, solar input and uh, um, 12 volt. And on this side has the uh, all the 110 volts. So it's also a inverter. Uh, yeah, no, yeah. <laughs> it's own charge controller and uh, inverter. So let's see here. And you can also download an app for your phone and control it or check on it and see what its status is or turn things on or off or whatever. And I'll probably never use the phone app. You know, myself, I'll just keep it simple. If I turn it on and I can plug things in and use it and uh, I'm good. I don't, I don't know. We'll see. I might. Uh, so you can use, so by default, when you turn it on, no, nothing is turned, none of these ports are turned on. Not the 12 volt, not the 110. Um, so by default, you know, it's kind of a safety feature, I think. But, you know, if you want to, want to use the 110, you want to make coffee or uh, run an air conditioner or whatever, um, you push that there. Okay, that turns them all on. Now they're ready. And same with the 12 volt side. Come over here. Okay, now that's turned on and those are all ready. And it also gives an estimate on, uh, based on your usage, you know, if you got something, uh, whatever, plugged in there, a fan or I, I, whatever you're using, it calculates the uh, amount of hours to empty. So you, you can say, boy, if I keep using this at this rate, I'll be emptying, you know, X amount of hours. Uh, and, and same thing here. Uh, with a, with a, uh, if it detects a 12 volt and the same thing, it calculates it. So, um, but we're not using any of that right now. Don't need it. Okay. And it also, when you're charging, it will uh, give you an estimated time till full, which is not very long. <laughs> it charges real quickly. We'll just stay uh, stay with that because it, it really does. All right. So what else should I say about this? I want to keep it simple and just kind of, you know, from my perspective, they sent it to me to review. So what do you expect? It's uh, this is how Dave would use it. This is how it's an advantage to Dave in his lifestyle. Um, I'm just not going to repeat, you know, a bunch of stuff off the website and or technical stuff that I think is kind of useless for the most part for most people. You know, this is what I do with it. I like mine. So uh, okay, so it came with the regular 110 plug to charge it. It does come with one. Uh, another plug for uh, plugging into like your 12 volt port of your vehicle, your vehicle, but you know what? They're in a pinch. I mean, it would charge it some. The limitation is more in the vehicle. You know, it's pretty typical of vehicles. They only put out so much. So it's not that this wouldn't take it. Vehicles only put out so much to begin with. So, I mean, it's there if you want to, you know, if you're on a long trip and you want to plug it in and put some power into it, but it's obviously going to take longer uh, with one of those as opposed to plugging in the good old 110 uh, power you know that delivers so and the other thing too uh, that into the other thing too is with the uh uh it does come with some um solar adapters oops I mean it has the plug that goes into the uh into the side sorry i'm not holding that very good and then uh, the other end has the mc4 connectors but you can change those connectors out to fit whatever your solar panels are. Um, now, whatever kind of adapters are on that. 
So, I mean, these can be made up or changed or just outright just buy them somewhere. Uh, but you can plug, actually, if you can come up with enough solar. Now, I only have 400 watts of solar on the van. Let me see. Let's come around here, see if we can see this, okay? Uh, it has three input for solar. And I, th I believe how it is is you can put 400, up to 400 in each one. So, to I mean, I would only take 12. Well, I do have, uh, yeah, I would only take one with my 400. And then I do have some portable panels. Um, you know, I can put in put another one. So I can put a, a fair amount of solar into that. But if you could come up with a full 1,200, let's say you max that out, the 4, 4, and 4, if you come up with 1,200, it also would charge it just as fast as the uh, the 110 thing. It, it would still charge in less than two hours. So, you know, it will take it. It's just, the problem is delivering it. And that's why I say the power ports on vehicles just don't, they just don't have that much available to deliver. So the launch is on Tuesday, April 19th, 9 a.m. Tuesday. These are launched for $999, which is a bargain uh, for the first 300 customers. I'm not sure what the exact regular price is. I'm sure it's competitive. Um, I guarantee it is. Uh, but hopefully, if you're interested in one of these, you get in there to be one of the first 300s. But that's when they launch it, and if they're officially for sale. So uh, I'll put the links uh, to the website into the... Uh, they have a Kickstarter campaign going, too. That's all easy to find. Put the links down and below in the video uh, description. But this seems to be the current uh, good deal. I'm, I'm happy to have mine. Are we done here? Can we be done? <laughs> all right. Um, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.